Hello, welcome to another Writerly Witterings. Today, I thought I would just talk briefly about question-driven research, because I had a request from Kyle Robinson saying, could I do something on question-driven research? I'm currently conducting research, but I find that my questions lead to more and more questions. After keeping up with this process, I end up forgetting the point of my research or get discouraged. Also, this is all before I even begin answering the question. I don't even get to the point where I'm going through books and articles. I can understand that feeling, Kyle. I've, I've had that often enough myself. It's really difficult because when you start researching, you have a brilliant idea for something, you go down that track and you think, OK, this is really good research, but every time you get to a certain point, you think, uh, hang about... If that's the case, then what about this? And so you're constantly being driven further and further into the research. I set up some years ago a performance group of authors called Medieval Murderers. And this is one of the things that we used to discuss all the time, because the worst problem as a writer is that, or for us anyway, all of us got into writing because we were really fascinated with the history. So we wanted to do lots and lots of research. And as Bernard Knight always used to say, the very worst bit of writing was sitting down and writing because he wanted to carry on doing the research. It is almost addictive when you start getting driven down that little path and you find the route is narrowing more and more as you go down. But you have to pick a point where you're going to stop and say, right, I've done enough, I will now start writing. Only the author can actually tell when that point's going to be, though. So what I, when I was teaching at Exeter University, I was mentoring students there, um, teaching them one-to-one -one on how to write more efficiently, how to write more effectively. They often got into that problem. And you'd find that students in particular, especially first years, but it's the case too with second and third years, that they would find that they were being given a question to do they would go to the library and they'd sit there and it was like a comfort blanket. You could sit there in, a, in the middle of all those books, pulling up books and doing research, more and more research, day after day, until they got to a point where they realised they had 24 hours to write an essay and submit it. And funnily enough, although they'd done a huge amount of work, they didn't get very good results. With students, basically what you have to do is try to decide how much information you're going to need and how much information you're going to need to support what you've got. So if you decide, this is the question I've been given, if you decide at the outset, actually this is the sort of answer I want to head towards, then that drives how much research you do because the research is purely and simply geared towards giving the response that you want. That can be very useful because that means that you can select different chunks of your argument for your essay. So you can say, well, the first paragraph is going to deal with this, second paragraph with that, third paragraph with that, and then you can spend a day on each paragraph, as an example. If you're doing research to look at a book, though, I'm sorry, Carl, I don't know if you're actually looking at writing a book yourself or if you're doing something from the point of view of a student. If you're writing for yourself as a novelist, then it's a lot easier, really because what you have to do is you define roughly what your plot outline is, you write your synopsis based on that outline, and then really the research you have to do is going to be fixed around that. When, when I started with The Last Temper and Merchant's Partner, I had a huge amount of difficulty trying to figure out little details, such as, for example, what quality of house would have had tiles on the floor, what quality of house would have had glass in the windows in that period, and there was next to nothing to tell me. So, to an extent, some bits of research, I, I went down a huge amount of time trying to get the answers and had to fail and give up and just stick a finger in the wind and hope I was getting about the right solution. And I, and I seem to have done. I mean, at the end of the day, you do as much research as you can, and then you extrapolate and try to figure out how things work. So there is no easy answer, I don't think, Kyle. If you're writing your own work, only you can tell when you've got enough research done so that you feel comfortable with your subject. Because if you as a writer feel comfortable with your subject, the reader's going to get that impression of your confidence. And your confidence itself will buoy the story and take it through. It is extremely difficult, though. The number of times when you're reading a book and there's one piece of information that's clearly wrong and that destroys, it shatters the whole of the foundation that you've been building up with that author up to that point in the story. Uh, recently I was reading a very delightful book, an exceptionally good book, it's very well written, it's really a superb piece of work. 
uh, all until about 80% through the book, uh, the writer mentions the Scottish judge picking up his gavel and calling for silence by hitting his gavel on the desk, which is brilliant, except no judge in England, Ireland, Scotland or Wales has ever used a gavel. They are only ever used in American courts, not in British courts. Silly little detail, but it's something that shattered the illusion that had been built up for me. Anyway, I hope that's some use, Kyle. I'm, I'm sorry if it's not, but if it's not, let me know what it is you're writing, um, and either we can have a chat over emails, or I'll do a slightly longer video, which will be a bit more geared specifically towards you. Hope that's useful. If you've got any comments, stick the comments down at the bottom there. Um, if you've got ideas for any future videos, please let me know, because I'm always very grateful. It's extremely difficult for me and my daughter trying to think up new ideas. We will soon be doing a video looking around my office. We didn't do that today purely because I'm repainting in the hall, and there's a whole load of junk in here, and you wouldn't be able to see my office for the rubbish. So I'm not doing that today. Um, but the next time I may think about talking a little bit about the benefits of crime writing if you're a writer. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. As I say, questions down the bottom, like it, subscribe, tell your friends about it and all those good things and then I can afford to keep on going. Thank you. Cheers.